Well, welcome to AF Live. It's our new interactive webcast. And um, I'm sitting here with my producer, Kevin McCabe, after 17 years being on the air. And it's something new for us here, so we're giving it a shot. It's, uh, it's our new live interactive webcast. Yep. You know, a lot of questions that I get asked, it's about a big snook that I caught down in Stewart. And uh, a lot of people didn't even think it was a real fish. We were using bait busters, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about on this on this webcast is DOA lures. I get a lot of questions like, what were you using? How do you work it? What type of action? And basically, you know, I just I, I do different things to figure out what the fish is doing and how they want the bait presented. And basically, uh, the end result usually is a pretty good size snook. Talking bait busters, right? Yep, talking bait busters. There's a few different type of bait busters out there. This happens to be the color of the bait buster that I was using that day. This is a subsurface model. And the way you can tell the subsurface model is that the eye of the hook sticks out right in front of the bait's head. And it's got one little balance weight in the bottom of it right there just to keep it floating. And it, it just barely under the surface is the way I work this one. And I'll, I'll work this one sometimes in 20, 30 feet of water. It really doesn't matter. It's it's the action of it. You work it slow. You can work it fast. Like I said, what you want to do is actually figure out how to present the bait to get the fish to eat it. Now, this happens to be <clears throat> the sinking model or the trolling model. And if you can see, the eye of the hook is on top of the bait's head. It's got a belly weight in it as well to keep it balanced so when it sinks down, it's going to go down. And they also make a trolling model that's a little bit heavier than this one that uh, that's a, it'll go down even deeper if you're trolling with it. It's a uh, one of the best baits I've ever used in my entire life. I've Everywhere I've thrown it, I've caught fish with it. Um, another different color right here and that happens to be, actually that one there was the trolling model and this one here is the sinking model. Right, so that's there it. Bam, there you go. Let me see those again. I didn't see them. A little lower. Yeah, right there. There you go. Perfect. I like it. And those are two of my favorite colors right there. And a lot of times, you know, people say, what? how do you choose what color bait you want to use? And down in Stewart, a lot of times, you get that tannic acid water that flows out from the Okeechobee uh, overflow canals or that when they dump the lake, and you get all the tannic acid in the water, and it'll actually dye the, dye the actual fish there. Uh, like an Easter egg, it, it dyes it different colors. That tannic stain will give it a gold color. So a lot of times, you'll see me throwing a gold bait buster. Uh, if the water's super, super clear, I go to an all natural color, which is this right here. All right. Got some footage rolling over here. What do you got here? Watch this. Okay, this happens to be the biggest snook of my life that I caught this day. Uh, Greg actually landed his biggest snook. It was his birthday. And uh, he had just landed the biggest snook of his life. And here comes, uh, here comes a fish that absolutely, we went bananas and absolutely forgot the cameras were even rolling when we saw this fish. It was a giant, giant line slider. And uh, I sure wish I could have seen the one that I had broke off about, I don't know, it was about five minutes before that. I hooked one, and I mean, it, it smoked me. And uh, I wish I was a little undergun with that 7.6 uh, that I was throwing. But it was a fun. You want to watch that fish? Let's watch it. Let's watch that fish. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude. Dude. Oh my god. Dude! Oh my god. <clears throat> oh my god, dude. That is a that's a toad. Dude. You wanna see what a true Mogan is, guys? Oh my god. Greg, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Happy birthday to me. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, Blair. The man right here. I'm afraid to let go. <clears throat> to the leader. Ow. Chafed a little. Dude, hold good. Hold good. Hold good. Got it. That's like holding a gator, brother. I got her. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. I gotta bring her over this I got, time. I got her. Oh. <laughs> Woo, Woo, baby. That is a Mogan. That is a and a half. 
My God, dude. How big you think? Dude, that's that's pushing 48 inches, man. Wow. That's a 35 pound fish. I mean, I. it's got him speechless. Absolute beast of a snook. And that was actual, I've, I've heard a little bit of feedback on that fish saying that fish wasn't 48 inches. If you can get to your Skeeter dealer, if you have a Skeeter dealer anywhere around, you got anybody that's got a Skeeter boat, measure from the S of that Skeeter all the way back to the uh, middle of the gas cap. And I think it was even a little over the gas cap. So we were calling it 48 and it might've even been a little bit bigger than that. <clears throat> any of the any of the tips and tricks that you ever want to use or learn out there that I use, especially down in Stewart, because a lot of times those snook down there, um, they eat different all the time. So a lot of the techniques, different times of year that we're out there, there's a bunch of clips on YouTube Go check them out and uh, you, know, you can learn how to catch those big snook too down there. All right, we're going to take some questions now. Uh, go ahead and Joe, let's, let's type in your chat window. Yeah, type in your <laughs> chat window up there. I'm still learning this, so we're winging it. Uh, biggest fish I ever caught had to be about an 18-foot hammerhead off of Sebastian Inlet. It was, it was just a, a beast of, a, of an animal. I mean, it, uh, it took a long time to get him in, and we uh, clipped the line and let him go. Ocean Attic, thanks for asking it. Great yeah, question. Thanks, Ocean Attic. Fish. Biggest fish you ever caught. You ever have I ever pier fished? My very first triple tail I caught off Canaveral Pier. That was back uh, God, I think it was like nineteen seventy seven. I'm dating myself there a little bit, but I was just a little bitty kid and <clears throat> it was a uh, it was a nice triple tail. But uh, it was my very first triple tail. I used to fish off the Canaveral Pier a lot. My biggest bass, 10 pounds out of the uh, canal system behind Canaveral Groves. If you know how to get in there, there are some monster fish down in there. Big, big lunkers. What's the best eating fish in your opinion? Ooh, best eating fish. There, there's so many different ones out there. Pompano, I can make a great dish out of. And uh, well, I just had, uh, what did I have last night? I had snapper tacos uh, from, from snapper we caught this past weekend. Well, let's move on. You want to move on? Let's move on to uh, maybe the Deadly Combo. The Deadly Combo. Um, got invited up to North Carolina last year by my old buddy uh, Mike Lundy. And uh, he told me about how they catch the redfish up there in 15, 20 feet of water on these dudes right here. And uh, check this out. It was pretty cool. Let's take a break. We're going to take a break real quick, I think. Okay. We're going to take a break real quick, and uh, we'll be right back with some more AF Webcast Live. He's fixed to wake up. Oh, he ain't baby. That ain't no baby. That's that ain't no baby. A, look at that pig. Great day. Finally found a hungry one up there. Nice. Ooh. ooh. Hey, you know what? That uh, talon works pretty good. <laughs> Stop me right, uh, right there. Well, if you noticed, I didn't lose the fish. I always kept tension on that fish. You never want to go limp with a rod on the fish, but uh, I was almost speaking high octaves for the next two months if I'd have landed on that push bowl wrong. But uh, fishing with Skeet Reese that day, that was a ball. And uh, it was the first time I'd ever used a talon. And uh, it was pretty cool. Well, we're going to check out how we're using the deadly combo here up in North Carolina, catching the giant redfish that live up there in the Pamlico Sound. Awesome place to fish. Check this out. Let's, let's watch. Let's take a look at that. Oh, we're going to take a look at the deadly combo. Bring it down a little bit. All right, there you go. There we go. That's the deadly combo. Now, it comes rigged with a DOA shrimp in there, whether it be your favorite color glow shrimp or a gold shrimp. This one happens to be the glow shrimp that comes underneath this one. You can rig it with anything. We put bait busters under them. We put terrorize under them. We've also did the uh, trick up there in the Noose River up in the Pamlico Sound fishing with that dude right there. And uh, basically just using the popping cork, getting the fish's attention. And uh, as soon as they see that bait up there floating around, boom, we'll see what happens here. Just giant redfish. This is you in North Carolina right here. Okay, this is up in North Carolina. We were, uh, like I say, fishing right outside of the Noose River, right in the Pamlico Sound. 
And uh, first time I'd ever done it, we were using the uh, we were using the Humminbird electronics basically to see the schools of bait as they swam by, and you could actually see the redfish where they were in relation to the school, and you could uh, you could catch them that way. Just make a lot of noise with that popping cork and. As soon as it goes down, you set the hook. I have no shame in throwing one of those. I got about 150,000 reasons why I like to use that. This dude right here, because we did it in the tournament series in Louisiana and uh, won us a lot of money with that deadly combo right there. Appreciate it, Mark, for making that one. And uh, wanna take a look, watch that. Let's watch a clip, right? We're gonna watch a clip from Bulls on the News. If you wanna search this out on YouTube, guys, you can watch the entire episode. It's going to be a minute. We're going to watch the size of this redfish. That's what you call a grown one right there. Son. He's fixing to wake up, I think. He's mad now. There you go. Into the wind. That's one like we get in the Indian River. I want one like we don't get in the Indian River. Look at the spots on that thing. I believe this one has spawned out. You got him? Yeah, I got him. You lay him up here. Sit right up here on the deck. It's still damp from the rain, so we're all right. Look at the spots. That is a beautiful fish. How's that for a North Carolina redfish? <laughs> in Pamlico Sound. It's September right now and they're doing their spawn. And uh, this one looks to be spawned out. All spawned out. So I'm going to get her back in the water. Ooh. As long as I don't go with her. <laughs> but one thing with these fish, just like in the Indian River where I'm from, they will get lactic acid build up in here. A lot of times people want to go back and forth like this with them. But if you get them in a swimming motion and just keep that lactic acid from. All right, guys. I saw somebody posted up on the uh, on the board there. What was I using underneath the uh, deadly combo? And we put the DOA Airhead underneath. Uh, you can use different colors, and you can rig them two different ways right here. Uh, if you see in this one, I have it rigged with a jig head, and that would make it go down a little bit quicker and give it a little bit more action. This and this one here is rigged with a swimming bait hook. This happens to be the Trocar, and what this will do will make it kind of kind of just flutter down and make it look like an injured bait. All you're trying to do is imitate a bait. What happens is when you pop that popping cork, it makes a big explosion. And a lot of times what the fish are attracted to are other, other fish hitting on top of the water. So when it makes that noise, they see a dead fish floating down or a very injured fish floating down and that's why they eat it. All right, we got some time for questions here. Um, let's see. Charleston. Charleston. One of your favorite places to fish. When are you coming to Oh, Charleston? yeah. Charleston, I'll be up there uh, the end of uh, next... Uh, actually, are we in October? No, not yet. I'll be up there the end of next month for the Cystic Fibrosis. It's the Red Trout, uh, Celebrity Red Trout Tournament. I'll be up there for that. Love Charleston. Absolutely love it. And I saw one on there. Yes, we will be doing some more from South Florida down there. Snook population is getting back up, so I think we're going to be back down there real, real soon. <clears throat> Don't be shy. Come to Grand Isle with me. Mm -hmm. And tuna fish. Well, let's go. <laughs> I would uh, Actually, I'm going to try to be out there the end of November. Uh, talk to Kevin Beach, and he said that's when the big ones are out there. So I might be down there doing some tuna fishing. Favorite fishing lure for snook? Um, it all kind of depends on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing down in the Everglades, I would be throwing this, skipping it underneath mangroves. Uh, this is the DOA shrimp, and I call this one the cotton shrimp because it has a little glow strip right on the back, and it works you know, just like a shrimp. I mean, they eat it. If, you, if they're hungry, they're going to eat it. It's, uh, there, there's a lot of imitations out there, but there's nothing like a DOA shrimp. That's why they work so well. We'll talk about that on, yeah. that on the next segment. Yeah, we got a net, another segment coming up where I nearly lost my mind on a uh, on a big trout, one of my favorite fish to catch. And that's that's I saw that question I think come up too. My favorite fish is big trout over 10, 12 pounds, and that's sea trout. Sabine Lake, Louisiana, absolutely love Sabine. That's a, one of the most beautiful areas in the world. Still got a great marsh there. Didn't get destroyed by Katrina and those those all those cypress trees. Just love fishing there. My favorite freshwater fish to catch had to be a sturgeon. If you happen to go back on our YouTube channel and see 
the name of the show? The Bucket List. The Bucket List. It was a fish that I've been wanting to catch ever since I saw a petrified one in second grade. But sturgeon, go check that show out because, I mean, I was feeling like a little kid that day because I was knocking it off the bucket list. Come to your hometown, Cocoa Beach. I'll be there soon. <laughs> I'll be there real soon. South Padre Island. South Padre Island. Guess where we're going to be the end of the next month? We're going to be a little bit further south of there. We're going to go uh, for one of my favorite fish once again, big trout. And we're going to be doing it in Baffin Bay, all the way back in the back. So that should be very interesting. That uh, That's also been a bucket list. Last time we tried to fish there, the wind was literally blowing 50 to 65 miles an hour. It was howling. Couldn't get a show done. Favorite fishing smack? <laughs> snack. Snack. Favorite fishing snack? Fried mullet. Love it. <laughs> Cut it in little fingers and you can fry it up and take it with you. It's, it's pretty good stuff. I need to go kayak fishing offshore. Unfortunately, when I was a kid, I cracked my back on a diving board and sitting over in a hunched position like that in a kayak really hurts my back. I've tried all the seats out there and I like horsepower too. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up and move on to the next segment. Let's take a little all break. All right, we're going to take a little break. Break Up next is going to be our segment with this dude right here, the shrimp and big sea trout. And we're fishing with the guy that made this thing. He's, he's a pretty funny dude. There he is right there. Oh, yeah, baby, that's a trout. That is a nice trout, dude. I'm telling you, that's a 9, 10-pound trout, maybe. Oh, nice fish. 